Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. A few days back, Microsoft introduced one of the most exciting features in .NET, the .NET Run App command. It's part of .NET 10 Preview 4, and it completely changes how we write and run c -sharp code. No need to set up a full project, just to try something out or print, hello world. It's now way more lightweight and beginner friendly. In this video, I'll walk you through what this feature is, how it works, and how you can go from a simple single file script to a full-fledged .NET project, step by step. All right, let's try it out. I'm starting with a completely empty folder in VS Code, nothing set up yet. No project files, no solution, literally just a blank workspace. Now, just a heads up, I've already installed .NET 10 Preview 4 and the c -sharp Dev Kit for VS Code. All right, I'm going to create a new file and name it hello.cs. Nothing fancy, just a simple c -sharp file. And inside this file, I'll write the most basic c -sharp code. Just a single line, console.write line. And here's the message. Hello from .NET 10. This is a cool feature. That's it. No namespaces, no class, no main method, nothing else. Just one file, one line, and it works. Now here's the magic part. Instead of creating a project, I just open the terminal, type the .NET run hello.cs. And it runs the file, just like that. And here's the output. Hello from .NET 10. This is a cool feature. Exactly what we expected. .NET compiles and runs the file directly. No extra setup, no project needed. Behind the scenes, it builds the code in memory and executes it like a script. Honestly, it's perfect for quick experiments or throwaway ideas you just want to test out fast. Now let's take it a step further. Say I want to print when something was posted, like three days ago. So I write, post a date equals datetime.utcnow. and add day s minus three. Then I'm just printing it to the console using string interpolation with console.write line. All right, let's go ahead and run this again. And there it is. It prints the full date and time as expected. It works, but yeah, not exactly something you'd want to show in a user interface. That output isn't exactly user friendly. It just dumps a full date and time string, which isn't great if you're building something for humans to read. So, how do we fix that? This is where NuGet packages come in. And yes, you can now use them even without a project. Let me show you how. We can use a new Git package called Humanizer. It formats dates in a way that actually makes sense, like three days ago, instead of a timestamp. So right at the top of the file, I'll add this line, hash colon package, Humanizer at 2.14.1. This tells .NET to pull in version 2.14.1 of the Humanizer package directly, without needing a separate project file. Let's go ahead and add the using directive so we can access the humanizer methods. Now let's update our console.write line to use humanize. This will take the date and convert it into something way more readable, like three days ago, instead of a full timestamp. All right, let's run it again and see the difference. Just like before, I'll go to the terminal and run. The first time you run it, it might take a second or two while it downloads everything, but after that, it just works like any other library. And as you can see, the output now says, posted three days ago, exactly what we wanted. Simple, clean, and human readable. Now let's take this even further. What if you want to build a small API right inside a single file without creating a whole project? Yep, you can do that too. All right, now I'm going to create a new file. Let's call it api.cs. This is where we'll set up a minimal API. And yep, still without any project files. Let's see how simple this can be. First, I'm creating a builder using web application.create builder. This sets up everything we need to configure and run the API. Next, we build the app from that builder. At this point, we have a working web application instance ready to define endpoints. Now let's add a simple get endpoint. I'll map a route called slash test API. So whenever we hit that URL, it'll respond with this message. Hello from .NET 10. And finally, we just tell the app to start running. That's it. The API is ready to go, all in a single file. All right, now let's run this API and see it in action. Just like before, I'll open the terminal and run .NET run API.cs. Okay, it's not running. We've got an error here. It says, 
web application does not exist in the current context. And that makes sense, because we're trying to use minimal API features, but we haven't told .NET to use the web SDK yet. So let's fix that by adding this line right at the top of the file. Hash colon SDK Microsoft.NET SDK Web. This tells .NET to bring in all the web-related features we need, including web application. Now, let's try running it again. And now it's running. No errors this time. The API is up and listening on localhost 5000. Let's go ahead and call that API endpoint and check the response. I've already set up our endpoint in Postman, and now I'll go ahead and hit send. And there it is. The response says, Hello from .NET 10. Our minimal API is working exactly as expected, all from a single file. Now let's say the single file is getting a bit bigger. Maybe you want to add more endpoints, middleware, or organize things a bit more. In that case, you might want to convert it into a proper project. And .NET makes that super easy. You don't need to start from scratch. Just run this command in the terminal. .NET project convert API.cs. As you can see, this automatically creates a new project folder, moves the API.cs file inside, generates a Proj, and even includes all the SDKs and package references we were already using. Right here at the top, you'll see it's using the web SDK that came from our hash SDK directive earlier. Below that, we've got the target framework, which is set to .NET 10. All right, now let's do the same with our other file, hello.cs. And just like before, .NET creates a new project folder, moves hello.cs inside, generates the docs proj, and includes everything we need to run it as a full project. Let's open up the docs proj file that was generated for hello.cs. At the top, you'll see it's using the default SDK, Microsoft.NET SDK, because this is just a basic console app. Then we have the target framework, which is set to .NET 10, exactly what we were working with in the single file setup. And right here, You'll also notice it includes a package reference for Humanizer, since we used that in the original file. This tells .NET that our project depends on the Humanizer library, and it should make sure it's available when the app runs. Now, what's really cool is, we didn't manually add this. .NET automatically included it here, because we used package Humanizer at 2.14.1 in the original hello.cs file. So when we converted the file into a project, it remembered what packages we were using and translated that into the proper format for the docs proj file. That means we can build, restore, and run this project just like any regular .NET app, and everything works the same as before. And that's it. We went from writing a single c -sharp file with just a few lines of code to running a minimal API, using NuGet packages, and even converting everything into a fully structured project, all without manually setting anything up. .NET 10 is really shifting how we get started with C-sharp. Whether you're prototyping, scripting, or just learning, this new workflow is clean, fast, and beginner-friendly. If you found this helpful, give the video a like, and don't forget to subscribe for more .NET tips and tutorials. I've got more videos coming on YefCore, minimal APIs, and everything new in .NET 10. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy coding!